Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Asheville Tech Media. Thank you for joining us for this Spotlight Series video. I'm joined today by Rahul Subramaniam, who is the CEO of CloudFix. Rahul, thank you for joining us. Hi Scott, a pleasure to be here. So CloudFix is, um, you're deep into AWS. You do a lot around cost optimization. Tell us how CloudFix came to be. So one of the other hats I wear is the head of innovation for ESW Capital. We have over 100 enterprise software companies within the portfolio. And as a result of that, uh, and the fact that we made a bet on AWS back in 2007, we started moving all of these companies over to AWS. Very soon, a few years ago, I had 45,000 AWS accounts to go manage, and my cloud costs were going out of control. And so, as anyone in my position would do, we started looking out for different tools in the market that would help us solve the problem. And initially, the results were really awesome. Almost every one of these tools promised me 50 and 60% cost savings due to wastage. And I put together a SWAT team and we started going after these savings. A year later, we found that we made no progress whatsoever on cost savings. And the reasons were two. Reason number one was the fact that all of these tools gave me insights about where the cost savings might be, but they never actually fixed anything for me. Fixing the problem was my problem. And the second one was anytime I actually needed to go get the savings, invariably the changes involved major heart surgery on my applications and pretty much none of my teams would be willing to sign off on the changes. So when we think about, you know, some of the, I, I know some of the tools you're talking about, they do give you, here's all these recommendations, now go make it happen. But they don't take, they don't do it for you. Are you saying that CloudFix will actually help you go execute on this? Exactly. So just continuing that particular story, one of the things that we decided to do when we failed miserably trying to use these tools was that we said, why don't we step back, look at every single cost recommendation that AWS has ever made then go filter that down to the ones that are completely non-disruptive and simple to implement. And we just automated those fixes. So what CloudFix does is it takes AWS recommendations that are completely non-disruptive and super simple to execute. We take that and we fix the problem via AWS change manager for all of our AWS accounts. So when we think about what you're, what you're saying here is basically, you're gonna go make the changes for them so that they're done in a non-disruptive way. Why is that so hard for others to do? I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around that a little bit. So while all these other tools provide, you know, or claim to provide 50 and 60% cost savings, realizing the savings is incredibly hard. Uh, we, for our own purposes, we took a different approach to CloudFix where we said, we need savings now. And so when we implemented CloudFix, you don't get the 50 or 60% savings, which is really hard to get, but instead you get somewhere between 10 and 20%. And that itself is incredible value because you realize those savings right away. If you had to stick that to a dollar amount on average, I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what kind of money does this save every year? Exactly, like I said, it's 10 to 20% on your AWS bill, and that's a big deal. So if you were spending a few million dollars, let's say you spent $10 million, a 10% savings is a million dollar. So if I'm thinking about CloudFix versus other tools, if I go with CloudFix, um, or if I go with other tools, I'm gonna to be told here, I can save 50 or 60%, but it's gonna be incredibly difficult and disruptive and probably unlikely to even get close to that because it's gonna require so much re-architecture and it's gonna require potential disruption of my application. With CloudFix, you're not gonna go out and make these lofty promises, but you're gonna keep it real. And you're, gonna, and you're gonna be able to provide immediate savings versus these sort of promised land sort of savings that you see from other tools. Exactly, the biggest value is to get those dollars in your bank and not have to spend that on your AWS bill. So that's exactly what we target. And do you provide additional recommendations like the other tools for the stuff that may be a little bit more disruptive or do you stop where you can stop automating? So we focus primarily on stuff that you can fix automatically and realize the savings. Um, and that itself is an incredible challenge. AWS publishes over 50 advisories every week. And we have a dedicated team that's literally just sitting through all of that and filtering out all of those insights. Uh, and then we're constantly adding new 
um, you know, features or fixers is what we call it to the uh, CloudFix platform. And as AWS creates, you know, tens if not hundreds of new services every year, there are that many more advisories to look forward to and constantly keep adding them to the platform. So that itself is an endless roadmap for CloudFix. How do you know what fixes are non-disruptive? And, and I mean, what kind of data do you use to determine whether a fix is gonna have an impact on a customer's applications? That's a great question. In fact, that is something that we actually look for AWS to certify. So for example, there is a, the new uh, EBS volume type called GP3. When you turn over from GP2 to GP3, um, that change is non-disruptive, certified and guaranteed by AWS. So we rely on AWS to tell us what is non-disruptive and what might be. Excellent. Um, so you do them and customers achieve the savings. What what is this meant as far as um, maybe sort of the 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 potential for the companies in your portfolio? to be able to move faster and get the market faster with applications. Has that had an impact on the business as well, beyond just saving money? I think we've just gotten a lot more efficient. We made the big bet on AWS, like I said, back in 2007. And therefore the excuses when we acquire a new company or get them to move to AWS, just go away because you operate the AWS platform in a very, very efficient manner with all of these best practices that AWS recommends baked into uh, the way we operate and the way we actually manage all of our costs. It just makes so, business sense. The other side of the coin here, though, is security. So, we, you know, these are non-disruptive from an operational standpoint. How do you ensure that the changes you're making don't impact the customer's security posture in their AWS instance? So none of these, um, none of these, I'm going to repeat that again. <coughs> So none of these fixes are disruptive on any front, including the IAM policies or the permission boundaries that are set up within the account. All of these literally just change certain attributes on resources to make them more efficient. And like I said, AWS guarantees that these are completely non-disruptive on all parameters, including security. Understood. So it's not just operational, it's also security and other other parameters that they make sure that that's, there's no disruption? Correct. So I repeat, uh, whatever security parameters have been set, none of that gets disrupted. Understood. Okay. If people want to learn more about CloudFix, what can they do? So you can go to cloudfix.com and uh, look up our website and you can sign up right away. It's super easy. It's five simple clicks to get you started and you can start saving 10% on your AWS bills. Rahul, thank you for joining us today and helping our, our audience understand what CloudFix is doing. And it sounds like a pretty quick and easy way to start saving money on their AWS bills. Absolutely. An absolute pleasure, Scott. Thanks for having me over. And thank you to our audience for watching. If you want to see more Spotlight Series videos, please visit uh, youtube.com slash actualtechmedia.